Ride, episode 16. This is the episode on the basics of reverb and ambience. Let's get into it, eh? Reverb. The beauty of reverb. Sound reverberating in a room, in a hall, in a space, in your headphones. Different types of reverb. What do we got? We've got plates, chambers, halls, and digital reverbs. All of them involve the same principle of many, many, many reflections very close together and that they create a one single sort of decayed thing. It's not like delays. It's like, whew. let's look at a few examples. I mentioned that that first time I was in a studio, the drummer was hitting his drums and I heard reverb in the headphones and it was very impressive to me. They had a big plate reverb in the studio. So I'm used to hearing drums like this snare drum. But what I heard in my headphones was this. And then he started hitting some drums. And I'm thinking, it was amazing sounding. That's reverb. And that particular reverb right there is this EMT 250 plate reverb. Probably similar to what was in that studio in Louisiana. Uh, here's another plate reverb. We probably looked at this prior. This is an Abbey Road plate. And you could control it from the control room. You had a remote. Here's a great reverb, Lexicon 480L. Pretty, pretty algorithms. They patented these algorithms and nobody's really been able to match them, you know, this being 2020. Here's the uh, Capital Chambers. A lot of fun, this thing. Um, let's go to Al Schmidt is probably the one of the best recording engineers ever and he swore by this program recorded Frank Sinatra. This is the chamber there. He calls this program the one because that's the chamber he liked and that's the settings he used, supposedly. This is a nice program, this Frank Phil Petty vocal program. I'm using a short sound like a snare just so you can hear the reverb. Oh, this is a nice reverb unit here. Uh, if you ever heard the police, Stuart Copeland on the gated snare. an effect that was like made the police record sell like hotcakes. Of course the fact that the songs were good didn't hurt. Okay, so that's different sounding reverbs. Let's take a look at the parameters you find on reverb plugins. This is a Lexicon 480L plugin. The parameters on this plugin are parameters you find on almost every reverb plugin. RTM, reverb time, the number of seconds, six seconds. This is a thin plate, pull it down to one and a half seconds. Okay, so you get the idea there. The next thing that is pertinent is size. Size is the volume of the room, and as you increase the size, you notice that the reverb time gets bigger. A very large size, you get up into this area here. A very large warehouse sort of sound. You can shorten this reverb time down. If you reduce the size with that short decay, you notice now it's very short because there's no way an eight meter cubic room would ring out for uh, as long as a 31 meter room. So if we go to four seconds, that's a 31 meter room. That's a 38 meter room. Then you pull down to seven meters. You don't even get that, that link, that reverb time. You only get that volume of room. The next typical parameter you find is high frequency cutoff, rolling off high frequency. Pull it back. Pull it back. So it gets darker sounding. 
next thing you have is pre-delay. Pre-delay gets the reverb off of the initial primary sound. So that way you can get some separation between what you are putting reverb on and the thing itself. It can be right on at zero. That's right on it. Okay, that's pre-delay. Bass, this is just a tonal thing right here. You can have a fatter, uh, more low end in your reverb. Okay, you hear the low frequencies there. This is the crossover between the highs and the lows where you want to make changes. So if you want to push bass and you actually want to have, if you want to have a real thin reverb, you reduce the bass and then push your crossover point up higher. You notice that's just nothing but high end. Lower the crossover. You get more mid-range, lower it more. You get to where it's almost full frequencies. Reverb time cutoff. What this does, this uh, cuts off the high frequency of the primary signal itself hitting the reverb. Diffusion. Diffusion is smoothness. That comes off as a little grainier sounding. Typically, when you have more diffusion, it's a smoother sounding reverb. So those are typical parameters you find in all reverb plugins. All right, here's another reverb unit. Just show you that while they're not all labeled the same, they have similar layouts. So this is Decay Time. Right, length of decay. Then we have high frequency damp. This is the opposite of the other one. With no damping, you have a lot of high end. With a lot of damping, it's darker sounding. High EQ, how much high end do we want? So you can have a lot and then start to damp that down. That puts more mid range. So those two work together to control the high frequency. So that's decay, reverb time, and, and high frequency control. Down here, we have other parameters. We have the types of algorithms, the types of rooms, halls, arena, plate, spring. So So anyway, those are different algorithms available with this particular reverb. Then we have size. This is, remember in meters, we had size. You can make that bigger. It's a bigger space now. Diffusion, smoothness. You notice that with less diffusion, you have more rough, more spiky things. A lot of diffusion, very smooth. The room shape. This puts in different reflection qualities. Okay, early reflection. Early reflection is the things that come back quicker before the reverb, the level of early reflection. You hear it's kind of, kind of some delay. Turn it down. Pre-delay for the reverb. If you have a lot of early reflection, Next thing we have is EQ. We can EQ the reverb itself. So that's tone control. Then there's a gate. So you hear the reverb start and then the gate closes very quickly. Puts an effect on that snare. Okay, that's gated. So anyway, that's, that's parameters. 
We've looked at reverbs. Now let's talk about ambiences and delays to liven up your mixes. Ambiences are the sound of a room around a sound. So if you have a recording of something or you have recorded something and it's very dry and there isn't any ambience around it, but you do want it to sound like it's in a room, there are plugins to use to create that room ambience for you. Now delays are repeating a sound in order to create a perception of ambience. So let's take a listen to some examples of ambience and delay and then take a look at the parameters on the different plugins. Here we have a track that has a lot of ambiences and delays in it to uh, aid in the sound of the mix. We're going to take a look at a few things here. Here is an example of what the track itself sounds like. <laughs> There we go. Got some slap on the vocal, got some ambience on things. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Here is the drum bus. Let's look at the elements that are in the drum bus. Let's see. So what's going on here, we have a drum room right here. Yours truly put on the different elements in the drums. And the drum room is this wonderful lexicon reverb here. It's a medium room. Now, if we hear the drums without the room, they sound something like this. They sound just fine, but I wanted them to sound like they were in a bit of a nightclub or something of that nature, so I did this. So that's ambience right there that I put on the drums on purpose to make them come across like they were in a room. Let's take a look at the guitar bus now and the guitar elements in the song. A little solo of the guitar stem here. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what we got going on here. This particular guitar that we're listening to right now, it was recorded with some delay on it already. I was playing through a delay pedal. Here's uh, the next part. So both of these guitars have some delay on them. I knew I wanted delay. I didn't do anything in the mix, but the delay is adding to these two guitars. Uh, the next thing is we have a little lead part here. So right here, EGT fill delay. This is me uh, adding a delay, and it's returning right here, EGT fill delay. So if I take that off, recorded it without the delay, didn't know how much delay I wanted at the time when I recorded it, so I decided to add this particular delay here. So let's look at the parameters here on this guitar part. The delay is obviously the time. I'm using the beats per minute instead of milliseconds. If you change it here to milliseconds, you see you get a readout of milliseconds, and then this is the beats per minute. This is looking at the tempo here, 73, and it's giving me a, a repeat of 132nd note, which is a very quick repeat. If I turn the feedback down all the way, you get one repeat. If I turn it up a lot, you get a bunch of repeats, and you hear it change in pitch. That's because of this modulation down here. That's the basic parameters on a delay. You either use milliseconds or you use a note value of the tempo, and then you have feedback, which is the number of repeats. Down here you have filters, low and high pass. We discussed this earlier, how you can change the tone of the delay versus the guitar. I'm rolling a little high end off and I'm rolling a little low end off. So those are the parameters. And you notice that I've got it, the guitar is panned a little bit to the right and the delay is panned a little bit to the left.
give it some space. So all three of those guitars, a lot of delay going on. A lot of slappy delay. I wanted this to sound rockabilly. So that's using ambience on drums and delays on guitars to just get this rockabilly concept going. Whoo, a whole lot of delay and reverb going on, what you say. It's going to have to be a two-part episode. That's the end of part one. Please tune into part two because there's a lot more information on delays and reverbs for you to absorb. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and continue watching the Home Studio for Beginners course here on the Record Mix Repeat. I'm your host, Rusty Smith. Thank you for watching.